Hey, how's it going, man? What's going on, bro? Good to meet you, man. How you, how's things? How you doing? Man, living the dream, refusing to wake up. <laughs> I love it, man. It's a pleasure to chat with you, man. Thank you for taking the time. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? My, my uh, ears died on me. Uh, yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine, man. It's all good. But, uh, yeah, ex congratulations on all the success you've been having, man. Loving the new music. Uh, we've been rooting for you. And... Uh, you must have been so delighted with the reaction you've had to the new, this new EP. It's been incredible. Man, it it has been. It's been nuts. Uh, it's everything I could, could have hoped for. Man, we, we put my boy out last year, and uh, we spend a uh, we spend a lot of time preparing content and everything to be ready for when we put this EP out, and uh, and trying to build that fan base on my boy. And dude, I mean. Everybody has just showed so much love for my boy and, and, and brought a lot of people to the table to uh, to be introduced to the rest of this EP when we put it out. It's, yeah. um, I'm super grateful. Cool. Man. And this this whole Kenny Rhodes EP feels just so authentic and it seems like it's come right from the bottom of your heart. So tell us about what this project meant to you lyrically and musically because it is very much you, isn't it? I mean, man, it means everything. This this was my introduction to the world as uh, as who I am, not only as an artist, but but where I come from, and uh, and uh, you know the moments in life that that shaped the man I am today, and uh, or the I like to say the twists and turns that got me here. You know, the county roads that got me here. Um, it was you know it was tough when I first started coming to town and and trying to write the way that I wanted to write and uh, what was going on at the time in country music, what was really working was just a, a little, you know, off from what I was trying to achieve. And, and I got some pushback from time to time from, uh, from some songwriters and, and some really loved what I was trying to do, but something that really became a, a huge driving force for me was uh, I got a little pissed off people saying that what I was trying to do wasn't going to work and that it wasn't going to be relatable and it was going to sound dated and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I was, you know, I love classic country. I love classic rock, Southern rock, hip hop, R and B, everything. And I'm just like, well, man, there's songs that were, what's dated mean? I mean, I, I like to say, I like to think more uh, classic than dated, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I want to try to write classic, music, you know, and uh, that stuff like, we're going to listen to for the next 20, 30 years. And I hope that this EP is, is something like that, you know? Yeah. Well, tell us about working in the studio. Cause you had Oscar Charles with you, who I know is a, a long time collaborator of yours. Um, tell us about working with Oscar because he might be a new name for a lot of people. He's not one of the familiar producers out there, but obviously a very talented songwriter and producer. So tell us about working with Oscar. Man, uh, happy to talk about Oscar. He's my <laughs> dude. Um, He's just, he's brilliant, man. He's, he's a Tulsa kid, came to Nashville, uh, went to Belmont, uh, and just started working as soon as he got into town. I met Oscar, I was going into Carnival Building uh, in Nashville on Music Row, which is, the bottom floor is a company, I believe owned by Eric Church called Little Louder. It's a publishing company, and, and Oscar was writing there at the time. And I would go in the mornings, I would get up and go to the gym or go have coffee or breakfast or whatever, and then show up at the office like two hours early before my rights. And he was always the first person there. And so right off the bat, I was like, I dig this guy's work ethic, you know, but he's super, he's kind of quiet and I'm not. So I would just corner him in the kitchen with my coffee and talk <laughs> his head off. And we didn't write for forever, but I liked him and, uh, we ended up in a room together with a guy named Dan Couch, who's a big part of those, uh, a lot of Kit Moore songs. And um, when we got in the room together, man, County Roads was born. And I left that, we, we wrote that song over two or three sessions, but I left after the first night of working on County Roads and was like, hey man, this is the sound. Oscar started playing this guitar lick that you guys hear on that song, County Roads. Wow. Wah, wah. and I was like oh man what is this and uh that's this Oscar man he he just finds those cool sounds and uh or the noise that he makes is is just 
something different and it's standing out amongst the same influences and love a lot of the same people's music and uh we also love to fight so it's a perfect uh match up to uh, <laughs> to make some music together <laughs> no, man, we, we uh the thing about me and oscar is we when, when we disagree on something we fuss and we argue about it for a few minutes but then we always try each other's idea and and i feel like to this day we've always been super honest if we're wrong or if we're right yeah that's that's where the best music comes from man i've heard so many stories like that yeah man he's he is great and you guys are going to see a lot more out of him he's working with he's working with some other artists and got a lot of cool things coming down the pipeline yeah well this this whole project lends itself so well to the live show as well you just mentioned those rocking guitar elements and how much do you think about the live element when you're songwriting and recording you know i I think that, especially when I'm working with Oscar, I feel like I'm at the show while we're creating the music. And I guess that's as much as I really think about it. Sometimes, like last night, we were writing a song and uh, there was a section and draw it out like people want to sing along to it kind of bridge. So, you know, that comes into the process sometimes, but... For the most part, man, we just try to create music around these stories. We feel, you know, confident that it's going to make somebody outside, you know, in front of the stage feel something. I say outside because I just got done playing a couple shows outside the other day. But yeah. I was going to ask you about that. You've been doing some shows with Jason Aldean, haven't you? Yeah, yeah man, so. I, just did two, I did two this past weekend. Um, and man, it was so sick. I, I've always dreamt of playing Bonnaroo. I never knew that it wasn't going to actually be Bonnaroo. <laughs> uh, but it was even cooler because I feel like I, I was the first person to, I think I was the first person to ever play the new Bonnaroo Farm show series. Uh, oh. So uh, super awesome opportunity. And man, Jason Aldean and his crew, like killer. That dude's a class act. He stayed yeah. up with me. He stayed up with me drinking some Wolf Moon bourbon till like four o'clock <laughs> in the morning that night. It was so awesome. That's what it's all about, man. But uh, tell us about. I mean, that leads me on to the next question, really, about working with Broken Bow for this release. Because for an artist like yourself, it's a huge platform to be able to release an, uh, an EP with a, a major label. So tell us about working with those guys and what it's been like to be a part of that family. Man, I love hopping on the ladder with somebody when they're on their way up. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what was going on when I ran into BBR. I went in, I had met with a couple labels in town, and there's some good folks at that label, but for the most part, those meetings were very stagnant and didn't get a lot of response. But when I went to BBR, everybody on the staff came into the conference room. There was like 30 people. I walked in and I was like, Shit, I've played shows for less people than this before, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I was supposed to play three songs and be there 30 minutes, and I played five songs and was there an hour and 20 minutes. You know, it was it was awesome And from day one. I told the existing members of my team, which was about three people at the time, I said, guys, I don't want to talk to any other labels. I want a record deal here. Like, this is this is home. And so we, we quit pitching, and we just waited. One day, my publisher was in a meeting pitching songs for Dustin Lynch, and she seen John Loba, and she walked up to him and was like, hey, I just want to let you know that, you know, L.B. Shane's my boy. I work with him. And, and uh, he was like, oh, you tell him we want to give him a record deal over here. This is like five, three, five months later. I don't know. And I'm just like, Lord, that's what I've been waiting on, you know. So he, he took me out to dinner. Uh, and he just, you know, he told me they were in the middle of that merger with BMG. And it just took a little while to get all the paperwork settled before they could sign any new acts. But dude, that team over there, like, you know, I know you're supposed to separate business and, and, and personal life and not get too attached when, when it's, you know, this kind of business stuff. But I, you just can't help it with those people, man. They are family over there. I, and I can't think of a single person over there that hasn't treated me like I'm a priority 
I'm so blessed to be with that team. Yeah. From a production standpoint as well, it feels like you were given so much freedom with this project. I mean, you hear these stories of new artists coming through and they're kind of molded into whatever the record label wants, but it doesn't feel like that with you at all. Man, that's, that's a pretty cool story. And I thought that in the beginning of the production story, I was going to get to have one of those moments where you have a fight with the label, but this story just even more proves how awesome they are. I brought Oscar to the table because we had been writing some stuff that they were really loving. And I just, I wanted to give him an opportunity to really get to produce something like with, with a band in the studio with a budget and he hadn't had that shot yet. And when I initially asked him about it, they were like, you know, we like what he's doing, but we just don't know if, if, if it's ready or not. And then they, they threw out some suggestions like, you know, why don't you go listen to some Jay Joyce stuff, some Dave Cobb stuff, Frank Liddell, my, all these awesome producers that I would have given my left arm to work with, you know, when I, when I first came into town and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I love those guys and I'll go listen to everything they, they've done. And I did. And I, I kept listening to it and I listened to, you know, all the church stuff, all the Stapleton stuff, all the Miranda Lambert stuff. And, it, and I love it. But every time I went back listening to someone other than Oscar, I just kept getting pissed off. And finally, I called my A&R guy at the label and uh, said, hey, man, you in the office? He said, yeah. I said, I'll be there in a minute. And I whipped it into the label and I went in there and knocked on the door just ready, had my dukes up, you know? <laughs> And I was like, man, we're wasting time looking for a producer. We have our damn producer. It's Oscar Charles. And, and they, were, they were just like, well, Elvie, if you feel so passionately about it, let's try it out. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I was ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, man, they, they sent us in the studio and let us go cut three sides. And when we showed up and played those three sides, they were like, this is it. Let's go. That's awesome, man. And you've had some incredible opportunities as well off the back of this. I know you got to play at the Grand Ole Opry last month, didn't you? Make your Opry debut. Uh, tell us about that experience. Because, I mean, you got up there and played my boy acoustically, which is a very brave thing to do on your Opry debut. So <laughs> tell us about that whole experience. I had to strip it down for that song, man. It, that's where it all started. It was just me and an acoustic guitar. And, and uh, one day that's probably where it's all going to end up, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I uh, I was just so I was just so thankful to have the opportunity to get to play the Opry. Um, you know, obviously grew up watching all the greats. You know, reruns of all the greats playing the Opry, and and when I got up there and seen that circle for the first time, this was the coolest thing to me about the Opry. I got up there and seen the circle, and I looked down at the wood, and you can see how the woods get you know concaved and scuffed up and scarred and chipped and you know the only way that floor got that way was from 95 years of boots on it you know and i was like god how many people have had to step on this wood to have caused this to happen and and uh, aside from that man you know a lot of people are they don't they don't like it when someone who's not a musician steps in a circle or they don't they don't think they should step in the circle if they're not a musician, but I got to have my wife there with me and we went out to the auditorium before the day started and uh, I had them go grab my wife out of hair and makeup and bring her out there and, and me and her, we just held hands and stepped into the circle together because if it wasn't her man, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have had the song My Boy, I wouldn't have had a reason to write it. Uh, I wouldn't have had somebody you know, holding it down for me and laying a laying a real firm foundation for me to, to build all this stuff on. And so if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been there. So she deserves that circle just as much as I do. So what's the plan for uh, live shows for the rest of this year for you? Have you got much in the calendar? I know it's difficult to plan things at the moment, but what's but what's on the agenda? It's looking like right now I'm, I'm still traveling back and forth to Nashville a lot. I'm still creating on a weekly basis and, and doing all that, but not a lot of shows within the next few months. I think I've got three shows within the next couple months. And then in August, we, we get started up. We're going out and doing some dates with some really cool artists that I'm super pumped to, to go out and play with. And then uh, no tour or anything, like no official tour yet, uh, but some, some great artists um, to be on stage with. 
and uh, I got a little baby girl on the way, man. Yeah, that's cool. exciting, man. Congratulations, dude. Thank you, dude. I'm scared to death, but uh, <laughs> I'm excited too, man. And uh, I'm just looking forward to getting her some, you know, some ear protection so we can take <laughs> her out of the road as soon as possible. <laughs> How long is it going to be until she's got a guitar in her hands? Uh, uh, two days. <laughs> I'll get her a little. I'll get her a little stuffed one first. I love it, man. And uh, just before I let you go, mate, um, just got to ask you about the UK, obviously, because we have loads of artists usually coming over here. If it wasn't for COVID, and the, the likes of Kip Moore, Cadillac Three, have gone down a storm over here. People love that vibe, and I think you're going to resonate in the same kind of way. So, is it in your plans to get over here at some point? Man, absolutely. It's also, uh, you know, I, I'm. Just thank you guys for so much love. Like I see those artists like Kit Moore and, and Cadillac Three and and Brothers Osborne and people like that going over there, and I respect their music so much. And I was just hoping that when I put my music out, you know, the UK and and, and Europe would respond to it well. It's to me, like people are, are really digging it over there from what I'm seeing online. So thank you guys so much. I'm more than excited to get over there and get to play for you guys at some point hopefully sooner than later yeah fingers crossed man well Alvy, thanks so much for doing this today man really appreciate you taking the time and uh yeah best of luck with everything man we're rooting for you yes sir thank you brother i really appreciate it. y'all holler anytime if you want to talk again